I timidly peered at my image in the bathroom mirror when I was confused and in pain. The boy who was looking back at me had a bloody lip and a swollen nose. It was difficult to understand how events had changed so drastically. We were best friends, unbreakable, as though only minutes ago I was forced to admit that he was once my best friend because of the physical proof of his treachery. In addition to the visible scars, the reflection in the mirror also showed the agonizing awareness that relationships can fail and leave behind a broken feeling of trust. Adam, is that you? Merle, my classmate, asked as he saw me wiping blood from my face. Are you alright? I nodded my head and gave him a warm smile, but he shook his head and grumbled. Come on, man, this is getting serious. You should go tell this to Dean. No, I said a little louder than expected. No, please. Are you serious, man? That stuck up Parker Evans is beating your ass and all you can do is wipe that blood? Merle had always been a kind person, but to call someone an arse, that only meant he was beyond pissed right now. He's my friend, I looked at the floor. It's fine, I can still handle it. He was your friend, he corrected me. I couldn't even raise my gaze to meet his. He let out a sigh before he patted my shoulders. Come on, man, let's go to the classroom. On our way to the classroom, I saw Parker's jocks on the hallway, grinning and sneering at us. I looked at Parker to see if there's any hint of him being the old Parker I knew, the Parker I love, but all I received was just a side glance as he drank the can of soft drink. The class ended as fast as I walked in there, but my day hadn't ended. I thought I was going home earlier, but I was wrong. For the ninth time today, I ran into Parker's gang, and now I'm being surrounded at the back of the school library. What do you want? I asked him so quietly. Just want to see you dance, is all. Entertain us, one of his crew members said. I looked at Parker to ask for help, but he was just scrolling on his phone. You can't, I whispered. You can when we say you can. The member pulled my hair so I could see their face and I winced in pain, until a voice interrupted. Hey, what are you doing? You're in the library. Keep your silence. That voice was stern and commanding. That even caught Parker's attention. And who are you? All members' attention was on the new guy. The man was tall and broad-shouldered, with chiseled features and piercing eyes. His jawline was sharp and his hair was styled and well-kept. He carried himself with a confident and stern aura, leaving no doubt that he was a force to be reckoned with. Zack. Zack Reynolds, he muttered. Not a single hint of fear in his eyes. Transfer student. His sharp eyes looked at me. I felt my knees buckled at that moment. Are you Adam Stevenson? I was startled at first, but soon staggeringly nodded my head. Great, I need you to come with me. Knocker was next to yours, I don't know where that is. He then pulled me out of the trouble. I somehow got away from them that moment, but when I looked back I saw Parker looking at me, as I went with Zack. I don't really know what the glance meant, but I'm sure he's more than pissed off. This is not good. When we somehow got far from them, the transferee asked me, Are you okay? His voice was laced with concern and tried to lift my chin with his fingers to see the cut on my lips, but I pulled away. I'm not fond of physical touch, now that I suffered in the hands of my ex-best friend. Yes, thank you, I meekly replied. I want to go away, but I refused, since it seemed like utter rudeness to the person who saved me. Don't bother. Though I really wanted to thank him, my voice came out as an utter, don't do it again. Do what? I can see the confusion in his eyes. Saving me. Why? I don't want you getting into trouble. Parker and his gang are too much to handle. I don't know what they can do to you. I thought he was going to be scared, but I was wrong, because he only smiled. Don't worry about me. From that moment, Zack had been there for me to defend me. I don't have anything to give him in return, but he always says it's fine. He was there to hand me his spare clothes when Parker poured dirty water on me during our PE. When I was left alone in the building during rain because someone had stolen my umbrella, he let me borrow his. And the last time when Parker and his crew beat me just because I forgot something from their errands, he was so angry that the time couldn't even control his rage. That was the only moment I saw him that furious, which brought terror to me for what he can do. But it also happiness as finally felt that there's someone out there that truly genuinely cared for me. Right now we were in a cafeteria, since there's no school today. We hung out just to forget our school lives and be ourselves. After the cafeteria, we hung out at the nearest park, where a lot of people were hanging out, having a picnic. We sat under the tree on top of the hill, where we could see everyone when a dog ran up to us, wagging its tail. The dog was really happy. I gave it a pat and immediately ran away when it heard a whistle. I turned to Zack, but he's already looking at me, which made my cheeks warm. 
since our faces were so close. But then I immediately pulled away, clutching my heart through my shirt. Hey, are you okay? He asked me, and once again I saw the concern in his eyes. My heart ached at that moment from the fact that this man had an incredible way to break down the walls I have put around my heart for years. I don't want to like him. I don't want to fall for him, but if he continues this, I know the walls, walls that have protected my deepest secret, are going to collapse. It's fine. I rested my back on the truck of a tree and performed a deep breathing exercise. I think that I do every time my heart races. We're in the middle of a comfortable silence and my heart was already settling, but that soon faded when he asked a question. Do you have a girlfriend? I panicked that I almost choked on my own spit. I... No, I have not. Why? I just don't feel like getting into a relationship, I answered truthfully. There's a lot of factors like... I want to focus on my studies and my career. Oh, I see. I thought you were gay for a second, Zach chuckled. My heart throbbed as I saw him laugh. He was so handsome, but soon my throat tightened as I finally processed what he said. Yes, I'm gay. I don't want to admit that out loud, but I couldn't even reply to what he said. What about you? I tried to change the topic. I've been into a relationship, he said, with what you can call the hottest girl in town, but it didn't work out. Once again, my heart pierced. I already knew this would come. Even if I let myself fall in love with him, he would never reciprocate it. My heart would break into a million pieces if I continued this feeling of mine. I have to put thicker walls. But I couldn't help but ask, why? Because I don't feel the contentment I got with you, he said. My eyes widened when I heard him. My brain couldn't function very well as I tried to decipher that message. Was that an indirect confession or am I missing something? Huh? Is the only thing I could mutter. I don't know what you're going to say, but you have to know this. Zack took a deep breath and said, It may sound weird, but Adam, I really like you. His eyes were on me and I couldn't move. At this point, my breath hitched up to my throat, rendering my mouth dry. Are you serious? I asked. Yes, Zack said, as if he disappointed. That's why I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, because I... I'm gay. She's a good person, though. It's just that we're not compatible in that way. We're better off as friends. I'm not forcing you to like me back, but I hope our friendship doesn't end here. I was baffled, but soon let out a small smile, as I could see his sincere feelings. It's okay, Zach. Thank you for understanding my situation. I can't bring myself to answer Zach right now. I know he's been more than good to me, but I have things to settle. Because all this time, I still have lingering feelings for Parker, and I don't want to bring Zach down because of this stupid feeling of mine. Say, Adam... Do you want to go to the carnival? Zack asked as we sat down at the school's cafeteria with him across from me. With who? I held my eyes on him. With me, he grinned. I was thinking that he was asking me out, so I tried to stop him by stuffing his mouth with a cream bun. Oh, Zack, I told you I can't. Don't worry, I'm not forcing you to do this. That I want to rush, that's not it. All I want is to spend time with you, he chewed the bun. I took a deep breath as I contemplated if I should go with him. We have a lot of assignments this time, but... It wouldn't hurt to go, right? I see, I mumbled as I felt my cheeks heat up. Well, as long as we're going home alive, of course. Zack and I met up at the carnival, and it was filled with boisterous shouts of people in the rides. I couldn't help but feel warmth inside as I saw the steady lights of the stalls and above the way. I looked at Zack, who had the same expression as me, but saw the twinkling reflection of lights in his eyes. There was a riot of colors and sounds at the carnival. The neon lights projected a strange glow over the thronging throngs as they lighted the night sky. Visitors were enticed to delight their senses by the air's spicy fried food aroma and pleasant cotton candy scent. As the participants competed for the winning plush animals, the carnival activities evoked yells of joys and sight of anguish in an equal measure. The rides were an explosion of sound and movement that made thrill seekers shout with joy. People were smiling, dancing, and generally soaking the laid back attitude everywhere you turned. It was really a joyous celebration of pleasure and life. We took the night slow and went to different stalls that offered varieties of foods, toys, and other merchandise. And somehow, Zack managed to get me a bear stuffed toy from a game. Thanks, Zack, I muttered as I hugged the bear. Glad you like it. It was nearing midnight when the usual street dance happened in the carnival. It was when loud music would play and everyone in the carnival could join. As they danced in a circle, it was fun. I was bouncing up and down as Zack followed me. I was having the best night of my life. My brown locks blew in the wind as I twirled carelessly around the historic cobblestone streets. I'm sure my eyes sparkled with unabashed happiness and a contagious smile lit up from my face when I saw people smiling back at me. 
I had never felt more alive and free. I danced with the pace of the music, my feet tapping to the beat as I took light movements. It appeared for a split second that everything had vanished, leaving only me and the music. My heart filled with excitement as my fellow visitors followed the beat of the music. Enthralled by the magic of the occasion, knowing that I had delivered a shared moment of happiness to so many. My eyes darted to Zack, whose orbs were fixated on mine. I stretched my hand out to him, and he took it with his bigger hands. I held his hand and twirled with all the people around us through my eyes. We were in our own world. But it ended up the worst when a hand pulled me out of the circle. I thought it was Zack who pulled me, but I was wrong. Parker? My voice was barely above a whisper. I felt fear crawl up to my spine. What are you doing here? Getting laid, I guess? He hissed. His voice felt like ice piercing through my heart as his grip got tighter around my waist. I tried to pull away, but I couldn't. He was stronger than me. Ouch, you're hurting me, I winced. You don't deserve to be happy, Adam, and you know it. He yelled, but his screams remained unheard from the loud music around us. You belong to trash. No, I'm not, I tried to argue, but Zack beat me to it. Keep your hands to yourself, mate. Zack grabbed Parker's wrist and gripped it tight. His grip was so strong that Parker's grasp of me loosened and eventually dropped my hand. Zack's eyes were furious as he glared at Parker, who did the same. So you're the man he's sleeping with, Parker scoffed as he yanked his arms away from Zack. Is he that good? Tell me. I can see Zack's clenching jaw and almost hear his teeth grinding. I knew his patience was wearing thin. I pulled his arm away since I don't want to get into trouble, but it was too late. Zack had already landed his fist on Parker's face. I dare you to say those words again, he growled. That's when the people started to notice us. They saw Parker groaning on the ground with a broken nose. There were people who were about to help him, but he just pushed them away and ran. Parker doesn't like to be embarrassed. No one does. This time, I am more sure that he's going to come back for revenge. I have to be strong when that happens. I took Zack away from the crowd to one of the benches where there were not many people. I looked at his fist and it was swollen. I took my handkerchief and ramped it around his wrist. What is wrong with that man? Zack hissed as he swung his fist from pain. He had a brick face. It's my best friend, I murmured. He is? I can see the shock on his handsome face. Was, I corrected him. He left to live with his grandmother after I confessed my feelings to him. But when he returned, he was different. He's far from the Parker I loved before. I can tell that Zack was listening intently to what I was saying, as I heard nothing from him. Do Zack trailed off. Do you still have feelings for him until now? I chuckled. Now that I think about it, yes, I do have lingering feelings for Parker. The more that he hurt me, the more I found myself falling out of love. I'm not a martyr, Zack. Zack and I shared a couple of cackles. Zack took me to the Ferris wheel, and up above we could see the lights of the whole carnival. It was really pretty. The night had ended, and it was filled with mixed emotions. I couldn't say I didn't like it. In the school, we were in the middle of practicing for our yearly cheer dance competition, and I was one of the team. We took a small break when I saw Parker's gang enter. At first, I tried to ignore them and drink my water, but they approached me. Adam, Parker coldly said. Parker, I returned the same coldness, which soon made him scoff, but soon he turned to shout at my teammates, gathering them around. Hey guys, I just want to share with you things that I thought you might have to know, he said with a smirk to which he proceeded to speak again. We have to give Adam Stevenson a round of applause for the courage to date a lucky man. My heart began to pounce in my chest as I got what he was trying to say. No, I tried to say, but it came out as a whisper. A very lucky man, Parker looked at me from his shoulder with a wicked smile. Zach Reynolds. I was lost in that moment. My secret, I've been trying to hide from the crowd, was now out of the bag. I felt my headache and my breath stopped for a moment. I began to wobble as I felt my knees buckled under me. I could hear them whispering as Parker kept speaking. I want to get out of here. I have to get out of here. Until I felt a hand lift in my chin and a soft pair of lips pressed on mine. When our lips first touched, a current of electricity erupted between me, sparking a deep and primal desire that I never knew existed in me. At that mere second, I felt left in a timeless void, engrossed in a sensation of Zack's presence. As the world around him crumbled away, I felt my heart beat in my chest. Not just a regular beat, but it did rather an extreme pound of drums. Nothing else mattered to me, and returned the kiss back, holding his hands were on my cheeks. I can't explain this, but I don't want this to end. 
The heat alone was enough to bring me back to my senses, only to find Zack kissing me. He pulled away from our kiss and saw his face red as a tomato. He turned his back on me and said, That's right, Adam Stevenson is dating me. And what of it? There was a silence in the crowd. I don't really care what you're all going to say, but I'm not going to back down just because some peasant tried to mock our gender identities. I felt my heart warm as I heard Zack's thoughts. In that moment, I knew I had found someone special. Someone who saw the world through the same lens as me. Someone who I could see spending the rest of my life with. Zack looked at me and held his determined gaze only in my eyes and said, The love between two people of the same gender is just as valid as the love between a man and a woman. It's love, pure and simple. I was thinking that everyone would hate me now, that they had learned my secret, but I was wrong. Cheers erupted and wolf whistles surrounded us with clasps and yells of cheers. I was stunned for a moment. They were all cheering for our relationship. I had yet to accept Zack's confession to me before, but now I don't have to do that since he just announced that we were together. I couldn't help but let out a chuckle. My eyes could burst into tears from happiness. That scene was too much for Parker to handle. I could see the veins popping in his head, and his face was red as pepper. He stomped out of the gym, followed by his lackeys, while we were left with a gymnasium filled with cheers and congratulations. That was magical, I must say. As the practice ended, I was left alone in the locker room since Zack had already left. He said he had something to do. I still felt his lips against mine, and I couldn't help but giggle to myself. Gosh, I breathed out. But my smile faded when I saw the same man fell in and out of love with, the man who put me through hell, Parker Evans. I looked at him as he leaned out of the doorway with his eyes cast down. Hey, I didn't answer, busying myself with things. I have something to tell you, he added. What? I said coldly. I... I'm in love with you, he said. I don't know what I'm feeling right now, but whatever it was, it was overpowered by anger. I could feel my heart rate increasing my breath becoming shorter and more rapid. All I wanted to do was lash out, to let my anger take over and to consume everything in its path. But even as these thoughts raced through my mind, as a part of me knew that I needed to step back, to take a deep breath and gain some perspective, I could feel the emotions churning within me, the uncertainty and pain that threatened to drown me in their depths. Why are you telling this now? I asked bravely. I can't confess because I was afraid of losing people around me. Of being a laughingstock, he said. I can see that he was hurt as he gnawed his bottom lips. As I looked at him, I could see the pain etched on his face. The furrowed brow, the clenched jaw, and the bottom lip that twitched as he tried to suppress his emotions. I thought I was going to hide it well, but the more I see you, the more I find myself falling deeper. His voice was just barely audible. Thank you, but I would have to decline your love, I said, not even batting a glance to his way. Why? Is it because of Zack? I know, I just want to tell you how I felt. No, it's not because of Zack. I immediately cut him off. But because of the fact that you chose to fight what people were going to say to you rather than fight for me. And I don't think it was easy to forget how you put me through all that tormenting stuff. I asked, but he didn't answer. Parker, I can forgive you again, but not in the same way that I did before. The trust we once had has been destroyed and it takes time to restore what has been damaged. This is not to say that I don't want to. Once pure, strong, and completely selfless love for you has since given way to hurt, resentment, and disappointment. I long for the times we spent having fun, giggling, and creating new memories. I miss the sensation of being in your warm hug and hearing your voice say comforting things in my ear. However, I also recall the sorrow and the tears and periods of uncertainty and security, and I'm aware that I'm unable to return there, Parker. I can't love you the same way I did before. As I said those words, I felt his eyes penetrating right through me. His fixed, piercing gaze was fixed on me. Despite the pain I could see written across his face, I knew my remarks had touched a nerve. His eyes widened, as though what I said had taken him by surprise. I observed how his body tensed, and his lips quivered as a result of the intense feelings he was experiencing. He was obviously having a hard time processing what I had just told him. He knew in his heart that I loved him, yet here we were having to accept the painful truth that our love was not enough. He was having trouble finding the appropriate words to speak, and I could sense the weight of his suffering. I found it difficult to accept, and I could sense the internal struggle he was going through. But as I observed him battling, something inside of me changed. I came to the conclusion that it was time for me to let him go and release myself from the bonds of unrequited love. 
I was aware that the journey ahead would be challenging and lengthy, but I knew what was the correct thing to do. Deep down, the two of us. I took a long breath as he stood there, his eyes still wide with disbelief. It was time to move on, let go of the suffering and sadness, and discover true and sincere love. Thank you, but I'm already in love with someone else. That is Zach. Zach invited me to spend some time at the park where we first hung out as friends once more. I agreed to date Zach after he made it apparent that he wanted to. I could see us smiling and playing games, oblivious to the world around us. Memories of that day flooded my head, before all the drama and the problems of everyday life had taken hold. It was a simpler, more innocent time. We were sitting under the tree with him sitting and I'm lying on his legs as I read the book when a girl approached us. She had long flowing strands of hair that had been treated to some sun. Her big lips were painted with a gentle pink tone and her rosy cheeks matched her light face. Her hair was a perfect shade of blonde and her eyes were radiant blue. Even I find her attractive. Hey Zach, she murmured. Can I talk to you for a minute? Zach looked at me as if asking for permission. I nodded my head and both of them had gone away, but Zach made sure that they would never leave my sight. I could see them talking from the body language of the woman. She was disappointed. Zach patted her shoulder before walking back to me. What was that? I asked. Worry was lacing my voice. Zach seemed to notice the worry plastered on my face, so he chuckled and gave me a kiss. Don't worry about that. But what is it? I urged him. I want to know. That was my ex-girlfriend, he said. My eyes widened and my jaw dropped. She was so pretty, I exclaimed. Yep, I know. That's why I told you. She was the hottest girl in town. He chuckled at my genuine reaction of admiration. So what did she want with you? She wanted me to go back with her. My heart sank when I heard him, and I felt my insecurities rise now that I'm nothing compared to a pretty girl like her. My eyes cast it down, but soon Zack lifted it up. But I told her I got you, and I would never leave you for anything else, Zack said, as he pulled me in for another kiss. My heart melt as he pulled me deeper in the kiss. This is the love I want. This is the love I deserve. The type of love that will fight for me, not just something that will hurt me even more. Zack pulled away from her kiss, and he let out a giggle. The end. Do you think Adam was right to choose Zack over Parker? Or he deserves to give Parker a second chance? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.